Attention duped masses! You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. You're listening to The Morning Monarchy for Friday, February 10th, 2017. I am James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. Momentous elections turn on momentous questions. In 2016, the question was clear. What has gotten into people's heads? That's what the New York Times asked in their review of the CBS series called Brain Dead, airing right alongside, concurrently with America's Next Top President last year. This single-season sci-fi satire from CBS called Brain Dead shined a light on the left-right paradigm and the scanners-like effect it has on the masses. Fans of David Cronenberg will get what I mean. Think of it like a mix of Invasion of the Body Snatchers and another satirical political TV show, Amazon's Alpha House, which is itself a satire of House of Cards, but we've actually already discussed that with Paul Verge on a previous episode of Deep Focus slash Navigating Netflix. You can find that in the archives and on the YouTube channel as well. Maybe too gross for comedy fans, maybe too goofy for horror fans. Brain Dead really grabbed me in the first episode or two when I realized that the political news clips in the show were as recent as they could possibly be, ripped from today's headlines, indeed. Had clips in there of Crooked Hillary, poor Bernie, and, of course, who we now know as the shocking winner of 2016 selection, Trump. As was already predicted by CBS in one of their earlier shows in 1958 with the TV western Trackdown, where an episode featuring Trump comes to town claiming he could prevent the end of the world by building a wall. Brain Dead is an American political satire science fiction comedy drama television series created by Robert and Michelle King. They actually created NBC's The Good Wife. Brain Dead stars Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Laurel Healy, a documentary filmmaker who takes a job working for her brother Luke, a U.S. senator, when the funding for her latest film falls through. Now, something we would always do in theater when we were breaking down plays. One of the first easiest things you can do to start to sort of analyze when you're talking about shows and films and plays and such. Look at the names. Playwrights and writers aren't usually fucking around when they name their characters. They usually mean something. So the first thing I would do is look at this and say, oh, our hero is named Laurel. You know, like the saying... Those are your ideals. Those are the things you are awarded. Those are the better parts of yourself. So even our hero character has the things she wants to do, but finds herself in the situation where she realizes there are things she has to do. Now, her brother's name is Luke. I briefly looked that up last night. I believe it said it was basically a, a, a tough fighter. You can do more of that research for yourself. And again, I'm just kind of telling you the tips. I have always found that really important, and that was told to me as a lesson from a writer, from a director. That was how they break down their plays. You just start to look at all those names. Because again, they put them in there for a reason. Now, sometimes it might just be funny things. It was like, oh, that was my dad's name, or oh, that was my dog. However, generally speaking as has been seen throughout this entire episode and what we generally talk about on Media Monarchy, there's more below the surface. So all you got to do is scratch a little bit. So Laurel gets assigned to be her senator brother Luke's new constituency caseworker, basically listening to complaints all day. She discovers that Washington, D.C. has been invaded by extraterrestrial insects which are eating the brains and taking control of people, including members of Congress and their staffers. Much of the internal comedy of the series was that in the altered reality of Washington, D.C. politics, only a few people noticed that, of course, brains were being controlled. One of the best highlights of the series was singer-songwriter Jonathan Colton, who we heard on Inauguration Day. We played his song, The Presidents, on our Pump Up the Volume Daily DJ set that day. Jonathan Colton created fun little musical recaps for every episode that lets you in on what happened previously on Brain Dead. Previously on Brain Dead. 
Some kind of meteor came down, no one knows where it's from They shipped it off so they could study it in Washington Guess what, it's filled with space bugs Now they're loose and eating people's brains Poor Laurel only wants to make her documentaries She's out of money so she works for Luke, her brother He's a democratic senator She listens to constituents complain Gareth is working for Red Wheatus, who's a senator, a southerner, a republican, a drunk. Government is shutting down till they find a workaround. The deal they make looks like a slam dunk. But space bugs crawl into Red's brain and start controlling him. He steals a Democrat and flips him to Republican. The shutdown happens and now everybody's mad again. Laurel discovers Scarlet sleeping with her brother and it looks like Scarlet probably has a space bug problem too. You know your day was lousy when somebody's head explodes on you. Previously on Brain Dead. Remember how there was a meteor from outer space? Brain eating space bugs roam around as if they own the place. Red Wheatus is controlled by them, but Gareth, Luke, and Laurel aren't yet. Does Laurel like him? Kinda, sorta, maybe. Yes, she does. They rock the tax prom, it's the lamest prom that ever was. They scheme against each other, and they end up with some feelings they regret. Laurel sees two old friends for a while She pretends, but Abby isn't who she used to be Something really isn't right She went crazy overnight Now she's having Stacy back for tea Ella calls for Luke's replacement Scarlet thinks that sex is gross Gustav starts investigating when a second head explodes That's all the time I have because this episode's too long Previously on Brain Dead, Gareth and Laurel sitting in a tree Oh right, that meteor that came here from beyond the stars DC is filled with bugs that eat your brains and dig the cars They crawl in through your ear holes Control your thoughts unless your head explodes Infected people keep infecting people who are not Gustav is maybe not a doctor No, but I read a lot A bug was in the CAT scan Their sense of common confidence erodes Ella's infected too Apparently the bugs want her to Embroil Luke in a battle for control Abby's views got so extreme Since she joined the space bug team So Laurel knows these bugs are on a roll A tender moment there When Laurel thinks that Garrett's dead Gustav plays the cars and tapes red solo cups around his head I've never seen two grown men share a candy bar like that Have you no sense of decency? My god, you monsters, not the cat Previously on Brain Dead, that meteor's filled with bugs. Now they're in DC, deep inside your brain, where they long to be. Gustav continues to investigate the best he can. Rochelle's surprised to find a space bug in the cat cat scan. Symptoms include balance problems, mind control, and major hearing loss. Anthony's with the FBI, handsome fellows, maybe why? Gareth digs up dirt that he recalls. After Abby's suicide, Anthony's by Laurel's side. You can count on him when booty calls. Luke shuts down the shutdown and it really, really angers Red. Gareth also has a special friend. Anthony seems great, but wait, why can't he hear what Laurel said? What'd you say? Exploding heads, blood pressure meds, a brand new screw worm, bro. The guy who pulled a knife is just a fan of public radio. What Brain Dead does really very well is show how obsessed and, yes, insane people get when they become born again, so to speak. Bugs eat people's brains and make them rabidly political. That's the one line takeaway from the show. It played last summer right alongside America's Next Top President. Kind of a genius programming move. Yes, Laurel is like Laurel Canyon. The show is produced by Ridley Scott. This is no low-budget affair. Bugs eat people's brains and make them rabidly political. Whichever team they were already aligned with, the phony R's or the fake D's, they become violently attached to their political dogmas. Dogmas which, as the show also shows you know, sometimes comes from astroturf groups and political false flags. CBS announced a 13-episode straight-to-series order on July 22, 2015. The show premiered on June 13, 2016. 
After four episodes, the show moved from its Monday time slot to Sundays to make room for coverage of the real America's Next Top President show. The show had a planned four-season arc, which would have seen the bugs invade Washington, D.C., then go to Wall Street, which you do actually see at the end of the final episode. Third season would have been Silicon Valley, and the final fourth season would have been Hollywood. However, three weeks before the stunning conclusion of America's Next Top President, on October 17th, 2016, CBS canceled the entire series after one season. It might have been fun to see the show go to those other areas and maybe answer the questions like, oh, where are the bugs from? What do they really want? Why are they taking over all of these different industries? And yes, it's filled with predictive programming. It's filled with the things we talk about in the news. It's got torture. It's got false flags. It has all of the things. It's all written in there. And it's all done in a little funny show. So it might have been fun to see where the show would have gone, but as we also know, shows go on too long and they become terrible. Three seasons usually be enough. So maybe it's best for this show. Maybe it's best that Brain Dead just exists as a little one-season show that showed, or perhaps predictively programmed, what happens when people stop being nice and start being statists. Comically Brain Dead. That's your latest installment of Deep Focus, a look at the one-season show from CBS called Brain Dead. It is available on Amazon, and you might be able to get it in other places as well. You're listening to The Morning Monarchy for Friday, February 10th, 2017. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology, and the occult. All remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.